there you two doc docs motorcycle service ra 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 welcome back to the shop so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little review of the axis 500 which is made by hi soon if i'm pronouncing that right i don't know that i am but Hyson, maybe. Anyway, when Linda and I moved to the new house uh, that had some acreage with it, we immediately identified the need for a UTV, uh, something that we could use around the farm here to pull stuff with, to move stuff with. We went on the look for that. I started um, investigating uh, four by fours. Um, you know, the one step up from a three-wheeler, a four-wheeler, if you will. What I had made the decision on was a UTV or a four-wheeler would be nice, and this is something you might want to consider. But um, in most instances, you still had to change the gears on them like a motorcycle, with the exception of some. Uh, and I could put Linda on it, and we both could enjoy it, but it, it would be like riding on the motorcycle. You know, it would be like riding on the motorcycle. It's not something that she could maneuver or drive herself. So we jumped up to why have something. You know, this is the next step in critical thinking or critical planning. Why have something that she can't drive? Okay. There might be a situation where I need her to use this thing to drag me out of the woods if I get hurt or what have you. So then we stepped up to a UTV. And oh my gosh, that's just like unbelievable. Uh, you know, you're like, wow, this is crazy. The prices on these things, like I, like I said, I think it was fifteen or $17,000. So I was like, dude, that's a car. You know, I'm buying an old beater and do what I need to do. Although I'd look stupid riding through the yard with an aerator tugged in on the back end of it. But we, um, we spent a whole weekend, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how you are, but when, I'm, when I am on something, when I am... When I am after it, I will get after it to get it. And we spent the entire weekend that weekend just looking at stuff and just getting disappointed. Uh, we went to a, um, a motorsport dealer uh, in another town that sold motorcycles and um, whatever you call them, um, them things, those spiders. Uh, the two wheels in the front and the one wheel in the back. And they had some UTVs there. Two-door, <laughs> four-door. <laughs> and six door <laughs> and brother <laughs> they can keep them six door ones because that's a new truck i cannot believe anybody is buying them things but anyway pretty much gave up on on getting this thing because had the money could not just justify that so got up that monday morning yep monday morning tuesday morning wednesday morning you know the following week had to stop at, uh, I ain't going to call it out, you'll figure it out later, but a big box store. And as I turn in the parking lot, I'm getting out of the truck and I go walking toward the front door and what do I see? Whoa! I'm like, well, looky there. When did these old boys start selling UTVs? So I go walking up to this thing and I'm looking at it and I'm like, looks pretty good. You know, it looks, on the outside it looks solid. Uh, I intentionally did not look at the price. Uh, I didn't focus on that. I just wanted to, to give it a walk around. And after I walked around it and looked at the price, I was like, well, you know what? I don't seem too bad. Uh, so I snapped some pictures of it, the ones you just saw, sent them to Linda. And I said, we need to go talk to these people this weekend. She said, okay. So the reason I'm doing this review is because of what I'm about to tell you. So, you know, critical thinking, the next step in this is to see what kind of reviews are on these things. So, I went to work the next morning and spent every uh, moment I had at work when I wasn't doing anything trying to find some feedback on these, these Hyson or Hyson Axis UTVs. And, buddy, I'm going to tell you something. The only reviews that I found on these things were that they must be pretty good or they're so new, there's no reviews. I could find nothing on them. 
absolutely nothing. I could find out where they were made. I could find out about the company, which had a good standing reputation. And it's like some of these companies. Um, I believe Hyson is the manufacturer of it. And I'm pretty sure they're manufactured in Texas. Um, but then they, they don't sell direct to the public. They sell to a second party who then puts their name on them and then sells them to the public or puts their name on them and then finds a third party to actually sell them. So the thing is made by Hassan or Hassan. Uh, it's uh, labeled as an Axis and it's sold by a certain blue big box store. And they're the only ones that are selling them. So um, I was like, okay, well, you know, that's fair. It's so new that uh, nobody has any bad thing to say about them, and you can't really say anything good about them because they are so new. Saturday morning, um, we hitched up the trailer, and we took off down to the big blue box store and uh, went in. This is kind of funny. went in and see the guy. I said, hey, man, I said, I need to tell somebody about these UTVs you got out here. He's like, okay. He's like, let me get somebody out there. Old boy comes out, old girl comes out, and she's talking about it, and you know, I'm 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 often, not too often, but I'm sometimes pleasantly surprised when I go into these big box stores, something other than your mom and pops, and I find somebody who legitimately knows what they're talking about. Uh, little gal came out. Matter of fact, if I'm not badly mistaken, I I, I sent a review back uh, to the big blue box store about her and our interaction together. Uh, who knew how to open the hood on it uh, you might think well that might be easy well, it's not that easy if you don't know these things and she knew you know where the key went she knew how to take it out of two-wheel drive into four-wheel drive she knew how to shift it she knew how to do all these things I mean she actually went over it pretty good I, I was pleasantly surprised and I was like okay and you'll see you probably saw in one of the pictures there it had a wheel lock on it I said like, well let's get a key out here for that wheel lock and um, let me you know drive it around a little bit see what it's like see what the response is on it you know I don't want to I don't want a nine thousand dollar golf cart well then again you know most golf carts probably cost more than that anyway and she's like okay so she got a manager to come out with a key and the guy's like he's like so you're wanting to test drive this and i was like yeah you know i'd like to get behind the wheel of it see what it sounds like see how it performs and he's like um, so you're you're pretty interested in it now i guess they'd had some problems with people before and this is sort of what I got people before wanting to, to just take them for a joy right around the parking lot and then come back and go, no, I'm not interested in it. So uh, he says, I'm, I'm guessing you're pretty serious. And I went, is that Dodge Ram? He looked and I said, yep. I said, you see that trailer on the back of it? He said, yep. I said, take the lock off of it. He's like, okay. So I did and I took it around the parking lot and I didn't get stupid with it, but um, you know, I put it in low gear and it was pretty responsive, you know, pretty responsive. Um, didn't put it in four-wheel drive. You don't do that on pavement, tech tip. And um, and in high gear, um, it, it it felt spunky. And I brought it back around. The guy's like, what do you think? I said, you know, I think it'll do what I want to do. And he's like, well, you know, it's a 30-day guarantee. Um, I believe he said that. He says, take it home. He said, don't tear it up. Bring, Try to bring back a piece of junk. He says, but well, if you take it home and it doesn't do what you're looking for it to do, he says, we'll give you money back. I look at Linda and I'm like, okay, let's do that. So, got it on the trailer, brought it to the house, and put it in the front yard and started taking some pictures of it. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at those pictures. So, this is us getting her home, getting her into the yard. And I wanted to talk about this here for a minute. And I might jump around because these pictures might not be in order. But this thing comes with a bag. Now, this is tech tip, pro tip, buying tip. Okay? Make sure you always ask, is there any additional information? Because this thing's kind of interesting in some aspects. And it, it, it had to help me learn a couple things about them because I know most of you have seen people going down the road with these things and depending on where you're at and what state you're in uh, you know you need to follow the safety precautions but I will tell you this right off the bat and I may talk about it here a little bit later this thing has headlights it has high beams it has turn signals 
uh, on the front and the back. It has running lights on the back when you have the headlights on, and it has turn signals on the back as, uh, and four-way hazards. Uh, seat belts, and it will only allow you to go over. You can move it without the seat belt on, but you can only make it go so fast without the seat belt hooked for the driver. Um, but it's it's road ready, okay? It's road ready, um, and we'll talk about what goes along with that here in just a little bit. Cause some of your states will just let you get away with putting it on the road like that. Others will make you put some type of triangular reflective um, placard on the back of it and maybe even the front of it if you're going to drive it on a road or a street. But as always, you do you and follow your laws. This thing came with a bag of stuff. It had the, it had the owner's manual in it. And while I'm talking about that, that's pretty cool to me. I... I like an owner's manual that I don't have to download and print myself. And while I'm talking about it, you can pimp these things out. Uh, there's a, uh, a little um, parts and accessories kit or parts and accessories book. You can quite literally buy all types of accessories for this thing. Pretty neat stuff there. So, you know, look into it a little bit. But this bag, and I'll talk about it now, the bag had the owner's manual in it. It's clear it's concise and it's to the point it gives you some warnings if you've never owned one of these things it gives you suggestions on how to operate it where to operate it where to go in two-wheel drive where to go in four-wheel drive when to use high gear when to use low gear now this is the tool bag that came with it now inside that bag you had like a little tool kit and with it i mean it's pretty cool it comes with every in this tool bag is everything you need to do to do anything on this thing here's the little tool that uh, adjusts the nuts on the shocks to give you either a softer or harder ride depending on what you're doing so this piece here uh one of the other things about this thing that i liked was it had like a receiver type hitch on the back of it and we'll probably see some more pictures of that here in a minute and I'll talk about that, but it did come with a uh, receiver hitch and pin um, that slid up in there, your typical four angle iron boom, just like you have on your car uh, or on your truck. So right here, if you'll look at this, uh, you can see a little bit of it. Um, this thing came with a title, and I'm gonna talk about that for a minute. Um, so I'm thinking headlights, tail lights, brake lights, turn signals, hazards what have you I, I can put a tag on this thing and really drive it up and down the road because so i thought you know with seat belts and lights and a tag or a title i'll go ahead and put insurance on this thing and um put a tag on it and be absolutely street legal but in my state um i blew their mind when i walked into the tag office with this they'd never seen anything like this before and again, that's how new these things were then and probably still are. Um, the lady had to call uh, the head tag office in the state capital of my state and show them this. And they were like, no, we're not going to issue a tag on that. And the reason being is because it would have to pass inspection. And in my state, you, they, there was no inspection for this, we found out. So without an inspection, you can't get a tag. But what that did teach us was, and what we eventually found out after I called the manufacturers, there are some states that will allow you to uh, tag this vehicle and put a, license, put a tag on the back of it, just like you have on your car, or your truck, or your motorcycle, and drive it down the road. But you gotta be careful with that, because if you don't own it outright, then you're gonna not only have to have collision, but you're gonna have to have liability on it. This is a picture of the sticker that was on the window. You can see here, it comes with a two-year limited warranty. It has a 471cc four-stroke uh, single-cylinder engine electronic fuel injection it has two and four wheel drive it has an automatic cvd transmission uh 118 it's 118 inches long and 57 inches wide and 72.4 inches high uh, it has a 1200 pound towing rate now 
If I understand what that means is you can hook 1,200 pounds to the rear hitch. Now keep in mind that that includes the weight of the trailer. Uh, it has a 3,500 pound winch. High beam, low beam headlights, cargo dump bed, a standard roof, and a two-piece windshield. Now you have a top windshield and you have a bottom windshield. The bottom windshield is only about this big. It's almost like an air dam. Uh, this vehicle will not travel above five miles an hour unless the driver's side seat belt is buckled. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the inside. Glove box, pretty nice. Latch is pretty good. Uh, this is another little area that you could put keys in or your phone in. Um, you know, something, I'll tell you, going down the road, there's not a lot of places to put stuff in this thing while you're traveling unless they're on you. Okay, because your sides are open, your back's open. Be careful with your cell phone. Keep it with you. Don't lay it in the seat. Get a lot of wind disturbance in there when you're riding down the road. So just keep that in mind. So here is one of the hood latches, and it's just a little rubber latch, kind of like on the Jeeps. Uh, you just pull it off here, work it through the window, and then that allows you to open up the hood. Now, I'm not going to go over a lot of the stuff under here, but I will tell you this. This big area right here um, is where the battery is. This was on day one. If there's any pictures that I'll show you here later that I most recently took, you'll see a battery tender coming out of there. And there'll be a little link right up here to my battery tender video. If you have anything that has a battery in it, you need to watch this video. Vehicle has an adjustable suspension on it. And I'm gonna try to show you the pictures here, but there's a little tool that comes in that bag that allows you to adjust the ride of this thing and I'm gonna tell you just like I preach service manual in all my other videos owner's manual owner's manual owner's manual read your owner's manual read it several times put some put some little little tabs on there some little sticky note tabs as quick reference for where you want to go but I will tell you this any adjustment that you make to one of these shocks or one of these whatever you want to call them you need to make it to all of them but the gist of it is you can back it off and get a softer ride or you can tighten them up and get a more rigid ride. This is looking at the uh, inside of the hood, at the headlights and the turn signals and um, the vent for the front looking straight down. The motor of this thing is actually um, between the seats uh, about the emission controls of it again this would be important if you're in a state where you can put a tag on it but it has to be inspected because this would give the inspector the guidelines for the vehicle another look at the shock tower from the driver's side now this is actually looking inside the vehicle and it's kind of cool you see the driver's seat there you see the steering wheel you see the parking brake in the middle uh, you see your gear selector there and you got forward and reverse on it and then you got your two-wheel drive and your four-wheel drive and the cool part about this thing is you can put it in four-wheel drive and then you can lock it you can lock the axles on it because it's it's four-wheel independent suspension and it's four-wheel drive but it'll do that left front right rear right front left rear or you can lock it all in together but again if you have them all locked in do not make sharp turns on hard surfaces um, you can see the door there um, again i was talking with linda i said tell me some stuff that you liked about this and right here is one of them it has a gas pedal and it has a brake pedal it has no clutch it's fully automatic that's one of the reasons that we went with a side by side was because Linda can drive this. Linda does not like a clutch. I want to draw your attention to the right hand side there. Over there by the passenger seat, you see a handrail coming up. Opening the doors to these things, and there's there's two hinges, there's two rubber strap hinges on this thing. Brother, these do <laughs> these doors will knock you down when you let go of them. So trying to get the door stayed open and then get over this six inch grab bar, get your, your buttocks over that six inch grab bar while keeping the door open. <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge for some people uh so i took them off your led display is pretty nice one flaw is the gas gauge uh the fuel gauge you'll see that there's one two three four five levels of fuel on there they're very faint very very faint so don't worry about running out of fuel on this thing 
until you see the E come on. And if you're using it on a farm or a ranch or around the house like we are here, you're always going to have fuel there. We probably got almost 30 hours on this guy. Uh, and that's important to know for your break-in oil change, uh, tech tip, pro tip, whatever tip. Uh, we call it a warranty tip. Um, you, you, you need to do a break-in oil change on this thing after a certain amount of miles or a certain number of hours. And if you've got equipment or if you've been around equipment, you know that the hours are more important than the miles. It's very important to monitor those. But if you do your, your factory oil stuff, if you do your oil changes, you do your transmission changes, you do your fluid changes, things are gonna last you a lot longer. Uh, to the left of the gas gauge, you're going to see whether or not it's in two wheel drive or four wheel drive. Uh, you'll see that at the time that I took this photo, it was in high gear. You can see that it's uh, the H is lit up and you'll see that at this moment, it was miles a clock if you need it uh, you got your miles per hour up there in the corner here's a picture of the door you can see them them grab handles there on the right man those were tough those were tough on old man's buttocks getting in and out of those <laughs> this is your two-wheel drive and your four-wheel drive selector and then you have a little cover there that you push to the left under that cover is your lock-in there's a little yellow button under that we'll take a look at and by doing that it locks all four wheels in together came with a mirror on the left and mirror on the right again i'm telling you this thing was road ready mirrors were kind of nice they would fold in um and that's kind of nice when you're going into the woods or trying to get into a tight spot little cubby hole on the bottom uh two places to put your your cold water this is the remote handle for the winch uh, there's a place under the dash that it plugs in uh, another look at the uh, winch uh, controller here uh, that is the winch unplugged front end of the winch here and watch videos on operating a winch that's a look at the top view of the winch itself uh, that's a pick of the front end of it it's nice and clean it's got a nice little bumper system on it uh, it's got protectors down there for the rubber boots for the CV joints that's a look at the underneath. You can see those uh, covers for the CV joints right there, little brush guards. Depending on what kind of terrain you're going over and what type of terrain you're going through to keep rocks and sticks and whatever from coming up there and ripping those boots and tearing those boots apart. Um, you want to inspect these boots periodically. So this is where your gas goes in. A uh, little hopper on the right. Nothing fancy behind the right passenger door. Headlights, turn signals, look at the front of it. Um, this is a, a good look at the rear end of it. You can see the muffler there. You can see the rear transfer case with those boots on them again and the brush guards uh, to protect the uh, CV uh, boots. Now this is with the dump bed up. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you um, another thing that I, uh, and we'll look at this in just a minute. Uh, the dump bed on this thing dumps real easy. It has a handle on both sides, so you can dump it from either side. And um, Linda manages it. I mean, we've had some heavy stuff in the back of this thing. Uh, and it comes with a rubber mat, too, in case I forget to mention it. To protect the inside of the bed. I mean, I know you ride down the road, and you see all these people that use these things, and you go, Doc, you're too. Doc, you're just an old, old wussy boy. You don't like to let anything get nasty. And I was like, you know what? Again, you do you. I'm going to take care of my stuff. I'm going to take care of my stuff. Now, you take care of it. It's going to last a lot longer. And you just do you. But one of the things Linda said she liked was the dump bed and the fact that it was easy to use. I mean, she comes over, she grabs that lever, and that thing just pops up and dumps. This is the rear. This is the receiver for the hitch. Uh, that's with the receiver hitch in that came with it, uh, or the extender. So you can then put in the part that has the trailer ball on it. Yes, this is a look at the back end, the other side of it. This is a look at the inside with the console removed. You can see the oil filter right there. Another look down on the inside with the console off. You can see how your emergency brake uh, works and your boot around the uh, shifter. Top of the gas uh, tank, which is visible underneath the right passenger seat. This is your air intake, so make sure that that's clean uh, out around it and there's no trash or debris in it. So here is your dipstick. And brother, it's down in there. <laughs> I take the seats out, take the console out, 
to be able to go in and check the oil. Another look, this is under the seat of the, the under the driver's seat. Uh, just a little area for you to be able to stow some stuff in there, maybe some winter gear, maybe a tow strap. This is a picture of, uh, of Linda behind the wheel. We captured these shots off one of the deer cameras uh, and Linda doing her thing. You can see she's got the winch there. Uh, I'm kind of guiding her through it and uh, we are just hauling uh, that tree right out of there without any problem. We've been quite happy with everything that we have been able to do with this UTV, this uh, utility vehicle. If you remember in the beginning of the video, I showed you the price of this thing. It was $79.99. Let's just call that $8,000. Okay. Well, after we got everything put together, uh, the guy, uh, we went to one desk and the guy wrote it up there and saved it. And then we went to a register and we gave them a number and they pulled up the order. Well, Linda and I were standing there and the gal, you know, they do their, the things that they always push at these stores. You know, uh, would you like to apply for a credit card? And uh, we don't do credit cards. Just don't do them. I'm not giving people free money. And I was like, no. I was like, uh, I don't know. And she's like, well, today we have a special. You know, they're still going to, they got that script they got to push. Uh, so today we got a special. You apply for a credit card today. It only takes three minutes. I can do it right here. And if approved, you will get 20% off today's purchase. Now, <laughs> the gears started to turn at that moment. So Linda leans in. I don't know if the girl knew what we were buying or not, okay? But Linda leans in and goes, how much is 20% of this? And I said, that's about $1,600. <laughs> and Linda leans in and goes, we'll apply for the credit card. <laughs> so if you're thinking about buying one of these from the blue big box store, find out when they're running those promotions. Okay, and take advantage of that. I'm not going to apply for a credit card for 20% off on a sheet of plywood. But on $8,000 purchase, that's going to save me $1,600. I'm going to apply for it that day and then do what I did seven days later when the statement came. Paid it off. So on that day, I got them. Okay. It's not, I'm just, it's not, not naughty about that. That's just taking advantage of a situation. So that's your little buying tip. Um, We've talked about a lot of good things, and now we're going to talk about the warranty. I guess if you're talking about the warranty on something, you're probably talking about something bad. Things happen. Again, these things are brand new, okay? Well, at least they were, and they probably still are. As I mentioned to you before, uh, those pre-ride checks, you need to do those. I don't like to do them, but uh, I did do them, and there was a little bit of leaking oil, and a little bit of leaking oil. Finally got around to looking at it, couldn't figure it out. So I called the warranty guy. And, you know, interestingly enough, um, warranty guy answered the phone. Felt like I was talking to myself. Good old boy, knew what we were talking about. Was like, hey, let me get you fixed up. Um, call this number. Uh, he's like, this is a, a dealer close to you. I said, okay. So I hung up, <sighs> called the number. Come find out the place had closed. Remember, this is during COVID, okay? Just during COVID, a lot of places shut down. So hung up, called another number, got the guy back on the phone. I said, hey, man, I said, the boys ain't answering the phone. The number says they've gone out of business. He's like, well, you know what? I'm sorry. He said, they haven't updated our list. We've had a couple, you know, COVID's going on. We've had some places shut down. Here's your next one. I said, okay. So I called them up, talked to the guy over the phone. He seemed pretty knowledgeable. Seemed like I was talking to myself. Uh, he said, yeah, man, put it on trail and bring it up here. I was like, okay. Um, I was like, do you suggest running it to put it on the trailer? He's like, I wouldn't. He's like, I wouldn't do that. I said, okay. So what I did do, because we had it right where it's sitting at right now, but the shop wasn't done, I backed the trailer right up to the door, <laughs> and guess how I put it on there? I took the winch, hooked it to the front, because, I mean, that thing will stretch out about 30 feet. Hooked it to the front of the trailer, had the trailer hooked to the vehicle, winched it right on the trailer, ratcheted it down. Bob's your uncle. We took off. Got up there, old boy met me in the parking lot, helped me push it off, get it unratcheted, pushed it into the shop. I was like, 
Now I'm thinking that this was probably the beginning of this year. And after talking with the guy, I said, hey, what's going on? You know, how you been? He's man, I'm so busy, I can't see straight. I was like, all right. He's like, when do you need it back? And I said, let's talk about when I want it back and when I need it back. He's like, okay. I said, I want it back tomorrow. <laughs> I said, but I know that's not possible. I said, I'd like to have it back before spring. And he's like, all right, let me see what I can do. So he calls me back about a week later. He said, hey, man, I, I figured out what's wrong with it. I said, okay. And I'm going to try my best to explain this to you. So we mentioned the motor, okay? And on a four-wheel drive, you get your motor sits right here. And you get your transfer case. In um, this instance, it's made together. So you have the motor and the transfer case together and out the back of it you have where your two cv joints come in from each wheel and on the front you have the two cv joints that come into the each wheel to the transfer cases well the transfer case is part of the motor so there's there's a there's a device in there that turns the transfer case that turns a gear that turns these okay i said all right he's like i ain't gonna lie to you he said it was a design flaw I was like, okay. He's like, early on, he's like, you just happen to be one of the people that got one of the first ones. This is the gear that comes out of the transfer case. It had another whatever that come over here and meshed with this motor and turned this motor. It turned this way. See if I can do this. This gear turned this way while the cogs made contact with this one and turn this so as this gear was turning this way this was turning this way and then these splines were turning another piece that turned your CV joints that turned your wheels I hope that makes sense problem was this nut that screwed onto here and let me see if you can see this see how flat that is right there you see those threads right there those threads are molded into this piece that's the back this is the front this is the part that attached right there and it sheared off this is the oil seal it goes into the crankcase or the transfer case this piece rides on it and what it does is when this is turning perfectly you got oil in here you got outside here this prevents oil from coming out when this broke off it came loose from the piece that it attached to and it allowed this piece to get loose and it was flopping so as this would flop while i was driving it oil would leak out of that gap because there's no gap up here that's why it was leaking oil I said okay i said where do we go from here he's like i've contacted the manufacturer there's two options. He's like, we replace the entire motor, which has the transfer cases on it, or we split the cases, the one side of the motor splits from the other side of the motor, and we replace the piece that I just showed you. I'm like, where are we at with that? He's like, well, they're trying to make their mind up. He's like, the transfer case and motor costs this amount with just a little bit of labor split the cases and replace that one piece is a little bit of cost in parts but a lot in labor cost so they're trying to figure out where they want to go with it he's like i'm just waiting to hear back from them i said okay so a couple days go by he called me back telling you this first rate called me back said hey they decided to go with just the piece so we're waiting for the piece to get here and as soon as the piece gets here we're going to split the casings we're going to place that piece we're going to put it back together we're going to test it and we're going to call you i said okay and I'm not going to lie, it might have been two weeks later, got an old call. I said, hey, man, what's up? He's like, I just let you know your, your access is available for pickup. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, well, I'll be up there to get it Friday. He's like, good to go. We'll have it ready for you. Rolled up there with the trailer, drove it on there. Everything worked. Everything's fine. Brought it back. Been driving the crap out of it. <laughs> Been having a good time with it. Um so that's really the only fault but at the end of the day because of a good warranty department and because of a good service technician we got it fixed and from what i understand based on talking to him that defective piece in the design has been redesigned with new material and they're not experiencing those problems anymore so there you go
All right, so uh, if you're looking for one of these things, I hope this video helped you. I hope it uh, helped you make a decision on whether or not you want to buy one. You know, um, I've always had this philosophy that I don't have to spend a lot of money to get something good. Do your research, do your reviews, try to talk to people who've had these things. Just like I said before, think about it, escalate it, see what you need, what's gonna work for you, what's gonna work for you and your Linda. So as always YouTube, I appreciate you uh, coming by the shop. If you've stumbled on this video and this is your first opportunity to see me, my name is Doc. Uh, I run Doc's Motorcycle Service. And what we do here is try to teach those people that uh, educate those people who have motorcycles into doing their own maintenance and their own repairs i preach a service manual all the time you've got just a little bit of mechanical skill and you can read a book a service manual you can do a lot of things yourself and but more importantly save a lot of money so i'll stick a little link up here uh you heard me reference hot donna earlier hot donna is a 1986 heritage soft tail first generation heritage soft tail produced by harley davidson and in this series we have stripped it down to the frame and completely restored if you're interested in watching that series, there was a little link popped up there. Uh, go check it out. And as always, uh, rate, comment, share, ride safe, handle your business, save some money. And...